Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Justin, as you probably already know, and I'm here with my friend Kanishka again to film a recap video on the 2017 US International Classic. Kanishka, this is our second video of this weekend because we had Lombardia Trophy yesterday, and it is Sunday morning, really early. I'm not a morning person, so please excuse us if our energy is kind of low. But let's go ahead and just get started, shall we? Sounds good. Okay, so as you can see here on the screen, these are the results for the ladies' disciplines. New and upcoming Japanese figure skating star Marin Honda won the gold medal here in both segments of the competition. And then Mariah Nagasu edged out reigning U.S. national champion Karen Chen for the silver. Let's go ahead and just start off with Marin Honda because she was kind of the big excitement I felt like leading into this competition because it's really the first major competition internationally that she's skating as a senior. And I gotta say, Kanishka, I don't think she disappointed at all. I already knew that she had that it quality, like that star power in her skating from what we've seen in the past as a junior. She kept the level up performance-wise in this competition to me. And I gotta say, her report card looks like an A+, plus because in both the short and the long program, she had zero under rotations. That means all of her jumps were extremely clean, especially the triple let's triple toe, which she executed well in both the short and the long program. Do you have anything to say on Marin? Yeah, so in the short program, I felt like she was a little bit underscored. Comparing the scores from the International Classic to the scores by other skaters at the Lombardia Trophy, I felt like in the short program, she was definitely a little bit underscored considering that her report card as you stated like was clean throughout her short and long program um so i was a little bit surprised by that but i'm not at all shocked that she won this competition well ahead of um second place finisher mirai nagasu and third place karen chen that's right so going back to your point about comparing marin honda scores uh, to other senior debuts on an international scene. At Lombardia Trophy, Alina Zajitova debuted her short program, had a fall on a double axle, and ended up with a score above 70. So it was really shocking to see Marin Honda score uh, below that here. Yeah, uh, definitely. So hopefully this is not something that the judges will continuously do. I hope that they reward based on merit instead of based on reputation. I know that Zagatova is the reigning world junior champion and Marin Honda is the reigning world silver medalist in the mm -hmm. junior event. So I wonder if that factored into how they scored at these two events. But looking at what we saw from Marin here, it looks like she is skating really, really well. And hopefully that transcends throughout the Grand Prix and hopefully by Japanese nationals, she'll be that worthy contender to make that Olympic team. I'm with you on that one. The interesting, interesting thing to note about Marin Honda at this competition was that she lost in program components in the short program to Karen Chen. She had a 30.12, whereas Karen Chen had 31.72. And then in the long program, it was flipped, whereas Marin Honda won the competition on program components. That may be because her free skate was one of the better ones, you know, of the night. Let's move on into Karen Chen now, I guess, because I felt like her Carmen was pretty lackluster. Actually, no, we're jumping around. Karen won the bronze medal. But just that fact, I think Marin Honda's long program stood out compared to Mirai's and Karen's. So speaking about Mirai Nagasu, who won the silver medal here, by the way, good job on her part for edging out Karen Chen. That triple axel was amazing. Ratified, totally clean, given mostly positive grade of executions. <laughs> <laughs> from the judges yeah did you like that triple axel attempt because i know you're a big tanya harding fan i know i respect tanya harding for the athleticism that she brought to the sport sure she was not the most artistic but that girl had raw talent so i must give some credit to tanya harding for that um speaking of mirai nagasu she impressed me throughout this week um attempting a triple axel in the short program is no joke 
And for her to actually land it, even though it was a little bit of a wild landing. I remember last season we were talking about it, like whether she's going to attempt it or not. But it was great to see how far that jump has come in her repertoire. And the one that we saw in the free skate blew everyone away. It was a little bit two-footed, but the revolutions were there. So the fact that she's attempting it this early on in the season... Hopefully it means that by the time the major events come in, and especially U.S. Nationals, where she's looking to get a berth on the Olympic team, that will be clean. Yeah, you thought it was a little two-footed? I don't think I saw that. But then again, they didn't have like the replay on Ice Network where they zoomed in. It looked clean from a distance. Maybe you have better eyes than I do. <laughs> I do have my glasses all the time on. Just in case. So. Yeah, the interesting thing, I'm looking at the protocols for Mariana Gossu's free program right now. And so triple ask, Axel, base value 8.5. Let's see, one judge gave it a negative 2, three judges gave it a negative 1, two judges gave it a 1, and judge number 7 gave it a 0. <sighs> that just shows how bad judging is <laughs> done at figure skating events. There's just no other way to explain it besides that judges are seeing different yeah. things, apparently. Yeah, I feel like I need to kind of like... Brush, um, brush up on how judging is like what makes an element minus two versus a minus one because based on what I know about the judging system I would probably give it a minus one if it was two footed which is what I saw but um, clearly other judges are seeing it as clean or just... yeah I would have given it a plus one assuming it was clean because it's like triple axel whoa and it looked good so that's the big talk of the town regarding Mariah Nagasu this weekend. Another thing that's a talk of the town regarding her is how many under rotation calls she got in her free program. Let's count them. The triple flip, triple toe, triple toe was under, as well as the triple sow cow, triple toe, double toe, and the double axle combination, triple lutz, and triple flip. I will say I'm not completely surprised she got those calls. But at the same time, I I don't agree with half of them. Like, I didn't see the under-rotation on the triple sow cow, maybe on the triple flip, triple toe. So it seems like this under-rotation cloud is still around to haunt Mariah Nagasu in her near future. The one thing that is very interesting is if you look at all the officials and the judges for this event, especially the ladies... The technical specialist is actually Russian, and I'm not trying to say that maybe the technical specialist may have purposely hindered um, Mirai Nagasu, and perhaps Karen Chen as well, but sometimes I know in the skating world there is sometimes that conspiracy, so to speak, where certain countries' officials may purposely mark someone down that's right but and conspiracy or no yeah, conspiracy with yeah conspiracy or no conspiracy it's that stuff is good to know nonetheless <laughs> i will say also about mariah the saigon miss saigon free program is one of the best music choices for mariah nagasu in the past few seasons i agree uh, mariah i know like a lot of people were talking about her program in the past having so much empty space so much breathing time and this program seems to be beautifully choreographed she seems to have all her gems even though they were called a little bit under rotated this time we need to remember she's attempting eight triples most people just attempt seven or six so the fact that she is stepping her um her skating to the next level technically uh, balanced with beautiful artistry she should really be considered someone to those jumps are marked clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm at this point in the season, and by the way, it's still way early. I think it would be great to see Mariah on the Olympic team. Obviously, this is going to be a discussion we're going to have for the upcoming months. But right now, it'd be good to see Mariah. Now, who I'm kind of a little on the fence on is Karen Chin, reigning U.S. national champion. Just because I felt like she could have skated better here. 
Yeah, it was kind of shocking, especially to see how the free skate played out. Like, she was struggling on a lot of jump elements, and usually Karen is so consistent, whether the jumps are around or not. Like, she doesn't usually fall out of jumps. But it seemed like in the free skate she was struggling quite a bit. And as you stated earlier, like, her Carmen just... It just did not really cut it for me at this point. Like, it left a lot to be desired. Um, but, yeah, I was a little bit disappointed by the cuts of the music, the interpretation. I feel like hopefully by the time this program is skated in a few more competitions that it will grow on me. But at this point in time, I kind of want a little bit more. Same here. You know, there's a technical issue because she also got four of her triples called under-rotated, which is ooh, kind of a lot, <laughs> let's be real. But I also think there's some issues with the program itself. I especially think in the second half, the choreography doesn't match well with the music. Like, move some things around. I I'm not sure. It's not a well-choreographed piece, more so in the second half, in my opinion. And I, I'm actually someone who thinks that Karen could pull off a Carmen. I don't think she was close to doing that this weekend in Salt Lake City for this competition. So I'd like to see some improvements made to the performance aspect of that free program. It's definitely early in the season, so there's probably not a lot that we can say. Mm -hmm. And ho hopefully um, she... Um, is able to make this Carmen come a little bit more alive as the season goes along. So. True, and both these American ladies have a lot of opportunities for practice. Uh, both Karen and Mariah Nagasu will be going to the Japan Open next month, and then also they both have two Grand Prix events. So still really early in the season, just making our notes on this competition. I expect both Mariah and uh, Karen's programs to improve by the time they have their yeah. first Grand Prix. Yeah, the Japan Open um, should be very interesting because we'll be able to see these two go head-to-head -head once again. And I honestly feel like whoever can be on top there is pulling as far as making the Olympic team. So. Yeah, Kanishka, you're going to want to repeat that because my connection cut you off. So the fact that Mirai and Karen are both heading to Japan Open, I feel like it's kind of nice to have that competition again. And it'll be whoever ends up being on top there, even though it's North America versus Europe versus Asia versus the continents, I think whoever has the better score has a little bit more, more momentum going into the Grand Prix and perhaps even the Nationals. I would agree with that. Okay, so we talked about the medalists. Any other U.S. ladies we want to, or ladies we want to talk about? I said U.S. because I just wanted to mention Mariah Bell. In my opinion, she kind of underperformed here. I, I think it's becoming a longer shot for her to make the Olympic team, as I haven't seen many clean, short or long program performances from her. I agree, yeah. So Mariah Bell was supposed to, it's supposed to be a contender here, perhaps even meddling. She did go to the World Championships last season, so I was expecting her to really skate clean both programs and secure herself as a top lady, but it just wasn't her week, really. And even though um, it was not her week, I'm glad to see that she went back to her Chicago short program because I felt like that really did bring out her personality and I hope that with the West Side Story free skate that she's getting to this season that she's able to bring that character of Maria out more in her skating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll have to see. Okay, so now let's move on to the men's discipline. Now as you see on the screen, Nathan Chen of the US Go Team USA won this competition with a total score of 275.04. Max Aaron, also from the US, wins a silver medal at the score of 261.56. And then Liam Ferris of Canada 
won the bronze medal with a score of 248.29. So not really close at all between the top three contenders, but I'd say the medal placements were very well deserved. Let's start off by talking about Nathan Chen. As impressive as always. I don't think I expect anything else from him these days. What did surprise me though was the fact that he kind of played it safe on all of his quad attempts here. So in the short program he only attempted the quad flip and then in the long program he only did two quads. The quad loop and the quad lutz. Both executed super well. I was just surprised <laughs> at the number of quads from him being two instead of four or five. I think it may be a smart move because he's probably wanting to conserve some of his energy, maybe focus more on his programs. By the way, two new programs, loving both of them. Love the long a little more because it's it brings out the more artistic side to his skating. You know, I think it's the kind of program he needs to push him up to the next level with the quads to be able to contend for a gold medal at any competition, really, with Yuzu and Javier Fernandez. Um, what else do I want to say about Nathan Chen? Uh, I could see uh, improvement in his program component marks, which is really nice to see. So Nathan Chen really is becoming the overall package, internationally even. So I, I'm really, really excited to see his progress this upcoming season. Yeah, it was very interesting to see Nathan Chen play it safe because he's usually known as someone who just grits everything out and fights for everything. But I think it's smart. I think that it's something that other skaters have done in the past where they try to peak at the right competition, and it's still very early on here. But nonetheless, like he definitely was the clear winner at this event. And... Yeah, like, as you stated, Justin, like, his artistry is really blossoming. Like, sure, he's no Patrick Chan, but nonetheless, like, there's some artistry that is truly coming within him, from within. And I feel like these programs, as they continue to be skated, will, in, will be scored with higher program component marks throughout the season. That as long true. as he skates well. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is the kid who attempts the quad toe at exhibitions. I even saw him per execute one at Stars on Ice in Seattle. And I was like, be careful. <laughs> yeah, we don't need an incident like what happened at 2016 mm. U.S. Nationals right. happen right now. No, not at all. I'd say the quad loop from the free program was a big standout element, though, from Nathan Chen. Wow. Like, not even attempting the toe. That's a new quad for him, too. Yeah, not even attempting the the quad toe or the quad sow cow, which is a, the two easier most and most common uh, quad scene from men. That just shows how advanced he is on the technical side. And then, uh, what were you saying the other day? I think you said you thought his spins could still be better. Yeah, sometimes, like some of his spins are a little bit not as great as they could be. But I definitely see a big improvement from what he was doing last season to now. So and I think that just is talk that's just probably conditioning and practice more. Yeah, practice, I was gonna so. say I actually think his spins are good, but it's almost like I'm gonna say they're good enough. They're nothing spectacular. Like, yeah, if you wanna be a good skater, your spins should be that good. So it's nothing extra, but good enough. Definitely. Okay, now let's move on to Max Aaron. So I'd have to say that good result, good competition for Max Aaron. I surprisingly don't hate either of his programs this year. I think they're more suited to him trying to become a more artistic skater. I'd say they were some much improved choices over some programs he's had in the past, such as Lion King, <laughs> Swan Lake, Footloose. Uh, let's see, what are his programs again? It was the short to um, Les Miserables, and then the long was to Phantom of the Opera. And what's funny is that when they say that out loud, like Max Aaron skating to those two pieces, it doesn't sound good at all. But he pulls it off better than I expected to. 
which is good. Also, um, an improvement from Max was that he was able to practice his quads in this competition. I got the quad toe, double toe in the long, and I believe in the short, he was able to execute the quad sow cow. Had, he had issues on the quad toe. What is your take on Max Aaron at the US Classic? So I too like Max's programs this season. Um, last season's programs were a little bit of a downer, but as Max is not the most artistic skater, I felt like the music choices were great for him this season. It has very limited artistry, but nonetheless more artistic than what we expect from Max. And kudos for him for attempting a quad bow triple toe and actually executing it perfectly in the short program here. And he's actually attempting multiple quads and it looks like he's becoming more consistent with them. So my thoughts overall about Max is if he can continue to land those multiple quads and land them cleanly, no more touchdown with the hand, I feel like he could definitely look at perhaps making the Olympic team, but way the the depth of U, U.S. men skating, it may be, be a little bit tough, but he has one thing going for him, and that is that he is becoming more and more consistent with those quad jumps. That is true. And also with these two programs, like they look more balanced than they have in the past. I think because some of his programs in earlier seasons have totally lacked artistry or they were just not for him. It just made him look like a jumping machine on ice with music to the background. These two programs are less of that, which is good. Yeah, I didn't know. Uh, I, I would never have imagined Max Aaron would get into two musicals. That's all I can say. That's right. I still think his best programs are the Thor programs, though, or the Thor Long program. Oh, back in 2013, I mm -hmm. think, right? Yeah. But, oh well, it's not us that chooses these music. But um, let's move on to the bronze medal winner here from Canada, Liam Ferris. Actually, pretty impressive. I think Liam is such a beautiful skater. And that's shown in his program component marks. He beat Max Aaron in program components in the short and the long, which totally makes sense. Beautiful skater. Good job with the quad attempts. He landed a quad toe. Beautiful one in the short program. And then in the long program, he was able to execute um, the same jump cleanly as well. So short program just had trouble with the axles and um, had some more mistakes in the long program. But if he's clean with a consistent quad, he may be uh, more of a shoo-in for that second Olympic spot for the Canadian team. Yeah, my heart is with Liam Ferris this season. I remember like he made the World Championships a few years back, and he actually gave up his spot to have, ne um, to have Nam Nguyen compete, which was unfortunate. But I'm still mad that about that. I know if I was an athlete, I probably would have taken the spot, but that's good sportsmanship on his end. And I feel like just because he did that, I feel like I, I really want to see this guy succeed and perhaps make the Olympic team. And as you stated, Justin, like those two quads in the short program and the free skate were beautiful and clean. And so is his skating. It's so beautiful to watch. And it kind of has a reminiscence of a little bit of Patrick Chan in there as far as skating skills go. And we all know that Patrick is known for his skating skills. So whatever is in Canada right now, like that's kind of what I feel like other international competitors should be emulating. And I'm really happy that he was able to come home with a bronze medal here. And hopefully this will give him the confidence that he needs as he continues on in the season. I absolutely agree. I don't want to hear about him forfeiting his spot <laughs> at a major competition anymore <laughs> to give an opportunity to uh, a teammate. Like, he did it once. He's good. Liam, think of yourself, of all the great experiences you could have. It'd be amazing if he went to the Olympics. Maybe if he went with his girlfriend, Kirsten Moore Towers. That'd be, be, that'd be a great thing. I would, yeah. So we wish him all the best and um, 
Yeah, it looks like he is really ready for the season. Yeah. Right. I want to go off on a little bit of a tangent because of the Canadian men, there's only two spots. And really, so Patrick Chan will be sent to the Olympics. There are like about three, maybe four, but three that I could think of other men who want that second Olympic spot. So it's Niam Nguyen, Nicholas Nadeau, and then Liam Ferris. You know, we... And then... Yeah. That's probably- and then there's Elijah, I can't even say his last name. I can't say it either. He's a, gosh, great performer. Go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so I like I like my Canadian men, you know? I feel like there's a lot of potential there. Definitely Patrick Chan will be making the Olympic team, no doubt about that. But that second spot is really open to anybody. And I think it'll be very, very intriguing to see exactly how they perform during Grand Prix. The future senior B events, and then obviously Canadian Nationals. Uh We shall see. Okay, so let's move on to the pairs now. Kirsten Moore Towers and Michael Marinero of Canada winning the competition. Kudos to them. P.S. I think they've never looked better than how they look right now this season, so I'm so happy for them. And then in second place, we have the American favorite, oh, in my mind, the American favorite, uh, Alexa Skimeka Kinnearum and Chris Kinnearum. And the bronze medal was won by U.S. newcomers Chelsea Liu and Brian Johnson. Congratulations to them. Also followed by Haven Denny and Brandon Frazier. So very good competition, especially for the Americans. But we'll begin with Kirsten Moore Towers and Michael Marinero, one of the top Canadian pair teams. Looking really good. Impressive short program and long program. The choreography really works for them. They look more consistent despite a botched lift in the free program. And I don't know why, but Kirsten Moore Towers and Michael Marinero seem a little more susceptible to lifts mishaps than other pairs do. Don't you agree? I agree. Um, I almost feel like Christian Moore Towers and Michael Marinaro, they're kind of almost like the forgotten Canadian in some ways, because there's so much talk about, um, there's so much talk about, obviously, uh, Megan Duhamel, Eric Radford, and last season we saw the breakthrough of Dylan and and Lubov, and then obviously there's Julian Sagan and Charlie Bilodeau, and obviously now there's Kirsten Moore Towers and Mark, Michael Marinaro. So the depth of the Canadian pair squad, I guess you can call mm-hmm. them, is very much competitive. And to see them come off a win here, it definitely is federation that please don't count us out for the Olympic team. So I feel like they skated really well here. Well-deserved win. And yeah, look forward to seeing how they are able to progress as the season goes on. Yeah, what was really good about this win for them was that Kirsten Moore Tower has suffered from injuries in the past, which really yeah. held them back compared to the other Canadian pairs. I think Kirsten Moore Towers had a concussion and she was off the ice for quite some time. Uh, I know she really wants to try a quad, a quad something to be competitive, but I think they're slowly working up to it. And also... She's gelling really well with Michael, like, as time goes on. Because I know in the beginning, we thought that Dylan and Lubov looked like the better pair than Kirsten and Michael. And I agree with that. But it looks like that gap is, is, um, is slimming down between the two. Because um, all pairs, really, all the top pairs in Canada are improving despite maybe Julian and Charlie, because they've had injuries as well. Man, those pair injuries <laughs> are no joke. But yeah, I'm, I'm so happy for Kirsten and Michael. Looking at their free program protocols, they actually won the short program with quite a few points over Alexa and Chris, but they lost the free. So thank goodness to a clean short program. Um, also placed yeah, they behind... even Oh, oh go ahead. Sorry. No, you go. So they attempted some really interesting combinations too. I think they attempted like the tri- double axle half loop triple sawcow, which is very much a diff- new element as far as from my standpoint. I've never seen any sequences like that back in the day. So it's kind of nice that they're attempting different combinations that maybe we have not yet seen before. Mm-hmm. Although so that triple sawcow was downgraded. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to Alexa uh, Skimeka Kinnearum and Chris Kinnearum. U.S. favorites and my well, my favorite. I shouldn't say that all American fans love them so much, but uh, I was really happy to see them. Of course, we all know of their struggles. Alexa Skimeka Kinnearum coming back from a very major injury that she's chosen not to disclose the diagnosis, which is fine. We need to respect that. And they kind of look like they're getting stronger with each competition they do. They came back last year for Worlds, looked good, and they even look a little better now. Love the new short program, by the way. It's very, like, edgy and a bit futuristic, kind of reminiscent of the Metallica short program, because, you know, I loved that one. (laughs) They strayed away from that kind of short program last year, but kind of they're veering back to it for this Olympic cycle, and I absolutely love it. I love my edgy skaters with their edgy programs, especially when their technical elements are executed well. Theirs, though, was not. (laughs) Had some mistakes in both the short and the long. Got to work on those side-by-side jumps. Chris in the short and Alexa in the long. But overall, they should be proud that they won the free program segment. Yeah, I like their two programs this season, like the Paint and Black short program. Again, it is very reminiscent of their uh, Metallica program, and I know that was a crowd favorite back in the day. And as you stated, uh, like they seem to be like getting stronger with each competition. Like their report card for the free skate, as you can probably see in the protocols, they were pretty much all around like positive GOE or grids of execution, uh, and minus the single sal cow. <laughs> minus the single sal cow, yeah, and then. I'm so glad that they went back to the ghost free skate program as well. Cause I know in the summertime they were talking about how they don't want to make that an excuse and go back to uh, the programs that they competed with the past season because they don't want to, I don't know. They don't want to make any excuses, but that ghost program is one of my favorites of them. And it really showcases how much they love each other. And I don't know, as a fan of Alexa and Chris, I feel like this program, if skated clean at any event, hopefully like nationals and Olympics, hoping that they make the Olympic team, that is, that it is skated to its full potential because that program, I don't know, it touches me in my core. And I don't know, I I don't know, I'm, I'm speechless, really. Like that program gets me emotional each time I watch it. That's right. And I think they skate it so well because the emotion is so raw and genuine. I mean, they're married for Christ's sake. Of course, they're going to give it their all. And of course, the emotion is going to be real and the audience and the judges will most likely pick up on that. So I I do think I have a feeling that on purpose, they didn't want to skate all out at this competition, maybe for all competitors. You know, the rink size is kind of slow, smaller audience. It's a senior B, not a Grand Prix. I I can picture at the right moment at the big scale event, even like the Grand Prix or Nationals. Wow, like look out, I will be having that (laughs) program on repeat on YouTube and tearing up because I'm such a believer in true love. So I can't wait for them to impact all of us in a very powerful way this season, maybe even at the Olympics. I agree with you 100% there, Justin, I agree. Great. So I was also really curious about the bronze medal win- finishers here, Chelsea Liu and Brian Johnson of the U.S. up-and-coming pair. I mean, they did go to Junior Worlds and place, I believe, seventh this last year and then fifth the year before. And I got to say, I could tell they're newcomers because they look kind of young, still need to improve on some of their big s- basic skating skills. But their short program, Kanishka, was completely clean landed those side-by-side triple sow cows, throw triple sow cow, and their connection is already there. So I could tell they were not a new pair. They just need still need to grow. Maybe their inexperience at major competitions showed in the free program where they made a lot of technical errors. But the fact that they skated such a clean short gives me a lot of hope for them in the future. Did you watch their performances at Salt Lake City? So I was able to watch their free program, and looking at the scores, it looked like they weren't too uh, too many points off of the silver medal 
So it shows that we do have a lot of great skating teams here in the United States. And hopefully, unlike the past where the teams would break up so quickly, um, I hope that this team actually continues skating together for many years to come because they seem to be very consistent on those um, side-by-side jumps, which tend to give a lot of us trouble these days. And if they can skate consistently, clean, like they are definitely one to look out for the future. And since we were able to recap Lombardi as well, like along with Chelsea Lou and Brian Johnson, we can add um, Deanna Stilato and Nathan Bartholomew. Um, Bartholomew. But the, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Horrible pronunciation today, huh? And then this. obviously Kane and Leduc as well. And it just seems like we have a lot of great teams that are coming up, especially for the future. Yeah, I think the issue is because, you know, when we talk about how great pairs skating is in, in America, everyone's going to laugh and roll their eyes. I would too, don't get me wrong. I think we have the talent. It's sticking together. We probably lack the appropriate coaches. And we need to get our skaters to deliver at least technically internationally you know like i get it the americans program component marks are going to be lower compared to more um experienced pairs internationally but can we just land our technical elements please (laughs) and you know i have i have hope for the future of american pair skating but um maybe more hope after seeing Chelsea and Brian. The other thing I wanted to point out was that everyone knows how Alexa and Chris has an amazing triple twist. They get always, they seem to always be able to get a level three because of how high the throw is and how clean the catch is. Uh, Ashley Kane and Tim LaDuke usually don't get that great of a level on their twist. Same with Nathan and Deanna. But Chelsea and Brian got a level three on their twist in the free program. And I agree with that because it was so good. So I don't know why. The fact that they can do a very advanced, in my mind, advanced throw triple twist has makes me have a lot of hope for them. Yeah, we need to bring some of those Chinese coaches and maybe like an Ingo Steuer from Germany and put them to work with our pairs. And hopefully that will be what is needed mm-hmm. in order for us to get back into the top contenders for what It sounds like pairs. that would be expensive, though. That's true. <laughs> but is it worth is it worth the expense though? That's the thing. I think so investing in the future. Yeah. Okay. I also wanted to mention Haven, Denny and Brandon Fraser, uh who finished fourth here, also from the US reigning US national champions. Uh but we should note that Alexa and Chris were gone at the national championships that they won. I I just told you this before we started filming. I think they have it. They have the it quality, I, they mesh well together, and they can perform. When their technical elements are on, it's great. But Haven, Denny, uh, she just struggles so much on the single jump element that that's clearly holding her back. I mean, I don't know how else to say it or what else to say. I mean, that's, that's the issue. Yeah, I, I know that um, Haven Denny has had an injury in the past, mm-hmm. and I'm not sure how much that has affected her training um, over the years. So hopefully it's not something too substantial where that's going to be an ongoing struggle for the rest of their careers. But with the sport progressing as it is, that those side-by-side jumps are becoming more and more important, and so are the throw jumps as well. And that tends to be where they struggle the most. That's right. And the judges are not impressed. They actually received slightly lower program component marks than Chelsea and Brian in the free program, which I actually disagree with. I think Haven and Brandon are a much more seasoned team. And you can tell the judges are just not impressed with their lack of consistency. Yeah, like it seems like the judges are how they score their program components is based primarily on how consistent a team is. Unless they are so well established and have been winning gold medals in different events, then they tend to score less if they continuously make mistakes. And if they continuously skate well, then the scores tend to go higher, at least somewhat higher, within each competition. So 
I hope that Haven Denny and Brendan Fraser are able to get more consistent and land those jumps because that is the name of the game. You said it. Okay, so moving on to our last discipline that we'll discuss really quickly is dance. And I think we all knew this, but Madison Hubble and Zachary Donahue skated away with the title. was not even an issue for them at all with a total score of 178.80. Coming in second with the silver medal are another U.S. dance team, Caitlin Hawayek and Jean-Luc Baker. And then winning the bronze medal from Japan, we have Kana um, Muramoto and Chris Reed. Why don't you talk to us about how great Maddie and Zach were? So Maddie Hubble and Zach Donahue were clearly, clearly miles ahead. Of, In a league of their own. Yeah, a league of their own at this competition. No surprise there at all. And their programs this year are so beautiful and they gel well within their style of skating. And this is definitely very interesting how this entire season will play out because they're already getting 70s on their short dance. So now that we have teams like the Shibitanis and Chalk and Bates, like this makes the entire season more interesting, especially with the short dance rhythm this season, not really playing to the Shibitanis as much. Like, it's not benefiting them as much. But kudos to um, Maddie Hubble and Zach Donahue for coming out here and showing the rest of the world, really. Like, look at us now. Like, we can actually be medalists at these major competitions, whether it's the Grand Prix Final, which I believe that they will make this season. The Nationals will be very interesting because now there's three top teams that are internationally being recognized as contenders and that obviously includes your favorites um chalk and baits and obviously the crowd favorite at most domestic competitions the shibitanis that is correct i think what's really important in ice dance is that you have good programs that the fans like you know i'm no dance expert but i feel like that makes a difference in your season and I got to say, both programs, short and free program, free dance, are amazing. I like, I'm not going to lie, I missed last year's free dance because that was very beautiful. But I don't know, there's something sexy and sophisticated, simplistic and not trying too hard about their Latin short dance, you know? I don't know why I was expecting like a ton more like loud horns and instruments, but no, it's like very simplistic with the beats. And I think Madison and Zach pull it off really well. I think Madison becomes the star and really showcases her beautiful line, beautiful body. And I saw on Twitter, Kanishka, that a lot of people were like, yes, the twizzles are the first thing they do in the free dance because in the past, Madison and Zach have struggled with the twizzles in the free program, mainly when the doors open for them to break through. So maybe that was strategic choreography on their part, who knows? Yeah, like, I remember last season at the World Championships, like, they were skating so well, and it looked like they were going to win a medal at the World Championships. But then the Twistles gave them trouble. So hopefully this season that is not an issue that they have to worry about. And Madison Hubble, like, just talking about her specifically, like, she knows how to um, bring it. Like, when she was skating with her brother, she was able to give it in the face and... You mentioned it earlier, like her lines, like beautiful. So it'll be, I don't know. I feel like this, at least from right now, it looks like this may be the breakthrough season that they've been looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had the right materials to push them to the top. Now it's on them. Definitely. <laughs> right. Was there anybody else you wanted to talk about? Because I didn't watch any of the other dances. <laughs> So it's kind of nice to see a comeback from um, um, Caitlin Hawaiik and Jean-Luc Baker. I know they've been on the cusp of perhaps making that world team for many years, and I'm not sure if it's their time this season, but they skated well here, and hoping that they continue on to the next Olympic cycle, I feel like they are one to look out for as far as making the team goes. So I kind of wanted to give them a shout-out. And it's kind of nice to see a Japanese um, team on the podium here, 
and I hope that kind of continues. You know, I really like. Um, I always talk about how there's a little bit of lack of diversity um, within our sport, and whether it's the ice dance event, whether it's the ladies' event, men's pairs. I think those are all the disciplines that there are in skating. So mm-hmm. hopefully um, in the years to come, there will be a little bit more of a diversity amongst the competitors. So We can only hope. Okay, yep. Kanishka, well, I need some breakfast <laughs> because I have not eaten anything yet. And then I have a full Sunday ahead of me. I hope you enjoy your Sunday. Thank you again for joining me on this video. And thank you for all the viewers for watching. We'll see you next time.